Really, Bungie? You're fucking kidding me right now. You're pulling an April Fool's in this motherfucker, aren't you? In fucking November? Right? I mean, tell me you're not rolling out a new DLC pack and pretending this raid activity on the Leviathan actually makes fucking sense. Oh, god damn it, man. Fuck me, even the YouTube order makes more sense than this bullshit. He can go fuck himself. <laughs> god damn it, Bungie, really? Come on, man. Tell me I'm dreaming. Pinch me or something, motherfucker. Because all that stupid shit that you've done with Destiny 2 so far, all the bad decisions you've made to casualize the game while alienating people with countless hours of play, why the fuck are we going back into the Leviathan shit for a DLC package focused on the Vex? Come on, man. You know, for all those that didn't pay attention this week, Bungie had this live stream giving us our first preview of the next DLC, Curse of Osiris. And I'm not going to get into the DLC itself. You know, some people who got to play it offer up their opinions of what they saw. You know, the YouTube ass liquor channels are saying it's fantastic. <laughs> While some of the more skeptical reviewers are saying it doesn't add much weight or actually seem average at best. You know, without any hands-on time, I'm in no position to make any formal opinions on anything other than what we saw during the live stream. I reserve my opinions on the content of the DLC until the day when I get drunk and I decide to review that motherfucker. <laughs> but look, man, the issue that I have right now is this concept of a raid layer being added to the game and having us brought back into the Leviathan. Deej and the clowns on the couch or whatever the fuck, they gave us a preview of what will be occurring. And instead of a Vex raid, we're going back into the Leviathan, into a different section of the Leviathan for a shorter boss fight this time around. Now, nobody knows what's in a raid layer just yet. For all I know, this could be the best boss fight they have ever come up with. I doubt that will be the case. But when you look at every release of Destiny content, the raid or endgame activity, it's the culmination of the storyline with the paid content. I mean, just look at their entire history. Vanilla Destiny launches, and the ultimate bad guy is really the Vex. You know, the final enemies that we face in the game are the Vex, and the Black Garden, or whatever the fuck it is. And eventually the first raid is the Vault of Glass. Now, the storyline from Vanilla was horrible, we know that. And we really got a throwaway line at the end of, like, that Venus story mission. You know, we're in the, the data bank area, I forgot what the name of the mission was. But they say, oh, it mentioned something about the Vault of Glass. He scanned something, and that was our only mention of that entire Vault of Glass in the game. We didn't get much in the way of Expose, because remember, everything was all in Grimoire cards when the game launched. So Atheon and the Vault of Glass were never fully fleshed out in the game. However, at least the final boss of the campaign was Vex related, and then the raid was Vex related. After that, each DLC that launched centered around a particular enemy that we fought in the game, and then he ended up fighting him in the raid. Crota was the force behind the Dark Below, and the storylines lead to his return, you know, with Omnigol and all that crystal bullshit or whatever the fuck it is. And who do we face at the end of Crota's end raid? Crota. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Then you have the House of Wolves. It released with no raid, but you know, we got the Prison of Elders. From the very beginning, Skolas was the enemy that we knew we were facing and partially faced him throughout the story missions. You know, we captured him all the way at the end of the main storyline. Then we fought him as the last boss in the Prison of Elders. So from start to finish, a complete narrative with a central boss figure as the final boss. Now you move on to the Taken King, the largest expansion that they had. You get Oryx with his echoes and apparitions that he would conjure up. We face Oryx all the way until the end of the campaign where we finally beat his normal form. Then we had to go into the Dreadnought and fight him again in his Shadow Realm and beat him all the way at the end of the raid. So far, three straight expansions, three straight times the motherfucker caused him to ruckus is the boss at the end of the raid. Rise of Iron then took a small step back. You know, the main enemy was SIVA, this nanobot technology shit or whatever the fuck it was that spiraled out of control. Basically, it was a fucking virus. Saladin initially fought it with all of his Iron Lords, barely won, and now the Fallen have brought that shit back and transformed themselves. You know, we never got a central bad guy other than just SIVA. That's really it. We never faced off against the raid boss before the encounter, like Oryx or Skolas or whatever the fuck. Never had the raid boss foreshadowed, sort of like how we had the Vault of Glass at least mentioned. You know, we went raiding into the wall and we faced Axis. We never heard about the motherfucker until we got to see him. So again, there was plenty of story within the Grimoire that explains all of this shit, but it's not really in the game itself. I mean, the best twist in the game was having to face some of those original Iron Lords all the way at the end of this core of Siva, whatever the fuck it is, and then they got morphed and stuff like that into those giant motherfuckers with axes, and that was part of the final campaign. That wasn't bad, but the raid itself 
was a bit disjointed in how they tried to connect to Vostik and then to Axis itself. Personally, I think they could have been done a little bit smoother how you get from Siva to Axis instead of just springing up that fucking spider monkey boss against us. <laughs> so they didn't quite get that part right, but at the very least, the very least, we have Siva unleashed by the Fallen, and at the end, we have a big fucking Fallen boss. Then we come to Destiny 2 and the Leviathan Raid. I also have to talk about the Leviathan ship itself. However, the raid has very little intro and tie into the normal story. Obviously, the boss is, spoiler alert, Emperor Callus' robot decoy. But similar to Rise of Iron, the raid boss wasn't part of the main storyline. Throughout the Red War, the overarching villain has been Gaul and his quest to take over the Traveler's Light. It's mentioned in the cutscenes that Gaul took over the Cabal and he exiled the prior Emperor Callus. Then we get that adventure on Nessus that comically says that the Emperor wants to eat Nessus and turn it into nectar for wine or whatever the fuck it was. Whatever, you know, it was an odd conversation and dialogue for sure, but at least it foreshadows the Leviathan ship. These are the only references to the raid in the game. And no, I'm not talking about the fucking collector's edition book and invitation. No, 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 no. That's not counting as raid material. That's outside material. Not everybody bought that shit. I'm only talking about what was in the actual game. So when you look at all the pieces of Destiny, three stories definitively focus on the main boss at the end of their raid or the Prison of Elders. You had Crota, Skolas, Oryx. The other three stories have disjointed connections to the raid bosses, but the stories themselves focus on a species, and that species is the raid boss. Vanilla Destiny really had Vex as the bad guys at the end, so we get the Vault of Glass. Rise of Irons with Siva and Fallen, then we get Axis, and then finally the Cabal and the Red War have taken over through Gaul, where we end up fighting Emperor Callus as the raid boss. However, Leviathan has nothing to do with the Curse of Osiris or the Vex. I want a fucking Vex read. I want the enemies to be Vex related, Mercury related. There should be a major tie-in or a plot that has Osiris leading us to a raid for some reason and we need that to be the main piece of the DLC. Instead, we're rehashing the Leviathan and whatever the fuck a raid layer is. And don't get me wrong, the raid layer itself could be decent content. It could be one of the best pieces of shit they actually create, but the undeniable truth is the game could have had a raid lair and a fucking Vex raid, fine. You want the Leviathan to continue on during the life of Destiny 2, but it's not like it's related to Osiris or the raid itself. And if they manage to tie these shits into one another, that would be a fucking miracle. That would also be the weirdest fucking plot twist you can imagine where you have big ass Vex on the goddamn Leviathan ship. Come on, man. This all sort of segues into the issues that I have with the Leviathan ship itself. You know, Bungie even states this is a large ship and all we've seen is the palace on top of the motherfucker. We haven't seen the full underbelly yet. To which I reply to they say in the stream, whose fucking fault is that? <laughs> yes, it's fantastic. You created this amazing ship larger than anything else you've ever made. But what the fuck does it have to do with the Vex or the Fallen or the Hive? Why wasn't the ship part of the whole concept of the Red War? Or why wasn't it its own DLC, for fuck's sake, man? With Callus returning in an expansion pack like Oryx. Why couldn't Gaul be the fucking raid boss instead of the shitty campaign boss? You see, in the Taken King, the Dreadnought was a large fucking ship too. I don't think as big as Leviathan, but clearly a large ship. It was explorable, it had its own secrets. It had plenty to do within that ship and it had its own expansion pack. But this Leviathan seems much larger, yet has so little to do. It's really an empty vessel, and the fact that we're going back and it's being advertised as going back is a bit of bullshit. See, with a ship so goddamn large that it swallows planets, you would think there would be some areas to see more than just the palace or the underbelly that we have to go through to get all the damn treasures. It would have made sense for the Leviathan to be part of its own game Similar to what they did with the Dreadnought. We could have fought Gaul as our raid boss on the Almighty, which, let's be honest for a second here, that would have had an awesome raid mechanic. You know what I'm talking about? You remember the part where the sun is beating down on people and you're trying to get to the next section of the ship without burning in this motherfucker? Try doing that shit with six people. Try doing that shit on a prestige mode and you're all trying to get through that part without dying and trying to burn yourselves. That would be something awesome. That would have been a cool part of the raid. But no, instead, it was part of the end of the campaign. Fine. You gave us a decent end campaign section, but the raid itself hasn't been that fantastic, and it's also disjointed to the regular part of the story. The ship itself is supposed to be bigger than Nessus, and obviously we only get certain explorable parts of planets. We don't get to see all of Earth. We've gotten, what, the fucking European Dead Zone. We got in the last game, we got the Cosmodrome and part of the Plague Lands or whatever the hell it is. So we haven't gotten the whole goddamn planet, but obviously we're not going to be able to get a whole ship for the Leviathan. But seriously, you say that this thing can swallow planets and all we saw was a very small section, and now because you realize you didn't give us enough, 
let's go back and see the rest of the ship. Did we go back and see the rest of the Dreadnought? No. Fucking Cabal crashed the ship into the side of the Dreadnought. That's pretty much the only part that we saw of the entire Dreadnought, plus the raid section. Essentially, they created this gigantic red herring in the game that we really don't use, that they really didn't utilize. And now that they realize they fucked up, they didn't utilize that ship to its full potential, hey, let's throw this raid into it. And for the next DLC, whatever the fuck is going to be tied to a Rasputin, let's throw that raid in there. So if that one's Fallen related or Hive related or whoever the fuck else wants to try and attack Rasputin, now you have another raid that's going to go right back into Leviathan. Don't do that shit. Mercury should have been its own raid. Mercury seems to have a fantastic setup for a fucking raid. The Vex were one of the best raids that we had when we got to the Vault of Glass because they have the time traveling bullshit and all the different things that they could do to fuck with us. But instead... We're going right back into the same fucking ship for a goddamn raid lair, which is supposed to be shorter than the normal raid. This is fucked up. This is just outright laziness. I don't give a shit how much you can defend it. I don't care what you can possibly do during the DLC to make it seem better than what we've had before. The fact that you don't have a Vex Tide raid shows you've gotten fucking lazy. Plain and simple. This is utter bullshit. And this is why people are pissed off. And I will guarantee you, because we don't have a Vex raid... People who did not buy the season pass, people who are still on the fence about this game are going to look at this and say, you know what, this is bullshit, I'm not buying this, I'm going to go continue playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Let me get ripped off trying to play Battlefront and get my loot crates to unlock Darth Vader or some shit like that. That's what people are going to do. They're not going to stop, buy this for an exorbitant price just to play a fucking content that has no raid related to the actual Vex. Come on, man. Bungie, you fucked this one up. You know you fucked this one up. And when your sales tell you you fucked this one up, I God hope you learn your lesson and you make an actual raid for the third expansion because this is utter bullshit. Anyways, now that I got all that shit off my chest. <laughs> Next week, question and answer. So everyone who actually sent in your questions, they've already been answered. I've already taken care of all the videos. Not taking any more questions. So I'll have all those shits for you up next week. And as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in the next video.